to have sat down. <laughs> With the addition of the bridges came more descendants. It was time to restore the old Komodo village. First came the farmers, so it was only right to provide them with land to work. Much terraforming had to be done to transform the steep banks of the river into farmable land. Houses were also put into place in the style of their ancestors. What happens next? Only the Komodo spirit can tell. Good morning, Pickles, and welcome to Crucial 2 with the Obsidian Order. Yes, I've just got out of bed. I hope you like that next bit of lore section that's continuing the story of the House of Komodo and how this place is transforming back into its old splendor, but bringing back the House of Komodo kind of village and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you around. We haven't completely finished this. This is 20 hours worth of work that you just saw in the beginning of that Um beginning of our episode today as you can see here we have got some houses that have been put in so we had all these little ruined houses before of the old village um and they just weren't good enough for for our settlers and also they are farmers as you can see here we've got the um rice fields here so this is all rice so this is going to help us produce some food later we've got cabbages here which we're going to use for food as well uh these around the back here which is slowly getting rid of my iron golems as it injures them these are foulberries i haven't actually seen what i need to use them for yet i just put them in there as decoration really but i'm sure we can make some food out of those eventually what i want to do is be able to section these off we we'll put gates in and stuff like that so that only like a couple of farmers are in each section and then they'll try and feed um, some other villagers, maybe in these houses that are trapped to try and collect all the resources. Um, because it would be quite cool if we had like an auto farm for beetroot, potatoes, carrots and stuff like that. So we can actually then eventually trade it with the farmers to get some more emeralds. Which brings us on to today's episode. I was going to do some building with you, um, kind of on camera, off camera. We are in dire need of some emeralds. Because we have... I don't even think we've got any around here. We haven't got any emeralds, really. And I need to kind of fill up the House of Komodo trading hall still, which we built in episode one, two, something like that. I want to be able to get a lot of the trades so that I can get all the armor and enchants for that. So we need to try and get something that we can trade. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go here today, finally doing our tortoise farm, which is hopefully going to get us some iron and it will get us some redstone and some lapis. And I think that's all that you can farm from them. Coal. The other one is coal. I knew there was four. So coal, iron, lapis and redstone will be able to farm from these tortoises. So we have a problem with our villager breeder. A zombie has somehow managed to get in here. Not sure how. Because we've got lighting up all around. I'm guessing that one of the... I don't know. No, I don't know how. Maybe there. Right, okay. At least we've got two there. We're going to have to kill those two villagers, kill that zombie, and get that fixed. This is, this is, yeah, an issue. The reason why we're here, though, is so that we can come to this guy and trade with him, because he's our librarian master, and he's got name tags. Though they're 15. 15 emeralds each, and we need four of them, which means we need another 44 emeralds. So, we've got rid of the zombie. Now it's time to cure our villagers. So, we're going to... Chuck that down. And now that's going to cure them. New problem. One of my villagers converted back. And this zombie villager turned him back into a zombie. I've managed to separate them. He managed to survive without being turned by this zombie here. Because I was around. The zombie was more interested in me. So I say zombie. I mean zombie villager. But So we're just going to do the same thing again. Splash him there. Feed him that. So here convert back. And we have our first... Baby! Well, it's not really. It's our seventh. But yeah, you know what I mean. I managed to scrounge enough iron together to get us another 25 emeralds. At least I hope I do anyway. I think they are our one. Yep, one iron per diamond. Emerald, sorry. And we've got him, and he's on one as well. So it's 24. Oh, no! No, I didn't mean to hit you. I'm so sorry. And we have got. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I think that's enough for 
two name tags. So I've managed to scrounge enough emeralds together, or iron, shall I say, to sell to get 60 emeralds, which is what we need. It's what we need. We come down here, 15 emeralds to pop. We'll take that. I'm going to see if it gets any cheaper, actually, because if we have some emeralds left over, it'd be quite nice. Come down. No, it's still 15. We'll try again, though. We've got two name tags. What we want is four. Still 15. They're not. It's not making it any cheaper, is he? Come on. Come on. You can reduce the price a little bit more, can't you? No, don't want to. Oh, well. We've got our four name tags. Now we need to do is find an anvil. We're up to four villagers. Two more to go. So come back here to camp to use our anvil. I'm hoping it doesn't break after doing like two of these because I want all four done. We are going to be naming our tortoises. Leonardo is one. Michelangelo. Donatello. No! And Raphael. There we go. The four Teenage Mutant Ninja tortoises and here we have six get yeah, me the other way six villagers leonardo now we just need to wait for the others to spawn michelangelo donatello and here's Raphael. yes we have all four of our ninja tortoises what we are going to be doing effectively is creating a farm which will feed the tortoises these cave roots because if you feed a tortoise a cave root they should regrow their... <laughs> there. If you feed a tortoise the cave root, they should regrow their ore. So what we're effectively doing is we're going to be creating a farm that will feed the tortoises cave roots and then mine the tortoises ore off their back. Now, the problem with that is that we need a lot of sticky pistons in order to farm the cave roots because we're going to have to farm the cave roots in order to collect cave roots to feed to the tortoises. So, I have got myself my bucket of slime, which I collected um, a few weeks ago, maybe, a few episodes ago. And as you can see, he's getting jolly happy over here. And we're going to bring F3 and G up. So this chunk here is obviously a slime chunk because he's got little bubbles above his head. As you can see, they've gone away. And now they're back. So he tells us where the slime chunks are. We don't want to build our slime farm here, though, because we are going to have to start farming slimes. What we're going to do, and I have already found it, this chunk through here is a slime chunk. So before I even think about making the ore farm, we are going to have to build a slime farm. So I'm going to do that off camera. But basically, this whole chunk here, where my ladder is, is going to end up being a slime farm. Now I'm here at Sunfires to meet with Llama because she has got a red bud sapling. We had flowering red buds, but I want the red bud sapling because it just makes things a whole lot easier. She also told me to name my price and I think slime is very rare, so we're going to see if she wants the slime. Although, there's only nine slime balls. She clearly doesn't want the slime. Time to get into a voice chat, I think. You thought nine slime would get you that. Slime I is wasted. very, very rare. I have a slime in a bucket, mate. I'm all good, thanks. I've, I know where a slime chunk is. I have a slime in a bucket. I still don't have any slime. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. But I was going to say, I used so many rockets, and then I gave up, but I found a unicorn, so that was cool. Um, and I named but it Fluffy. Guess, guess how far she had to travel to find your, your precious red bud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that. Oh, I, you had so many stacks of rockets, and on my way back, right next to my, like, less than 100 blocks from my, from building my castle. No way. <laughs> this is one of those trees. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was so funny. It was just, like, literally, like, 100 blocks or less from where I started. You mean I could have found it when I was getting my unicorn back from yours? Yeah you, yeah, you probably walked Walk past, past You mean your cow? <laughs> My cow, yeah. Yeah, Easy. it wasn't the cow being so long, it decided to be a cow. How about those? I'm, I mean, aren't they the dumplings that I gave you? Yeah. <laughs> they, they could, I don't to be like fair, you have got hands. quite a few. Yeah, yeah, I'm still, yeah, still working my way through them. So. Bob it. Yeah. I'll grab some terracotta off you at some point. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, help yourself to terracotta. So we've got the bounty on red bud saplings right now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we should probably just 
we 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 I we, dig we a should, hole and should... hide it. No, 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 no. We we we, we make the most of it. We oh, yeah, we've all got mean. our farms. We can collate and collate, you know, bring all our resources together and sell mm -hmm. them at a premium. Well, I think mm -hmm. that we need a uniform for our red bud game. Ooh. Yeah. I like that idea. Ah, oh, nice. You've got some too. You figured it out. <laughs> The other day, Bobbit was so in my Creeper good. Farms, just having a look at how bad it was, and, um... Hello, Creepy. <laughs> I didn't realise they follow you around. Yeah, they're, they're, they're friendly, though. I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy now. You just, oh, you just pop just him, him on the head. Just pop him on the head like this. Boop! So what I've dug out here, as you can see, you've got two, two slime chunks. So that's two, four, six, eight, and then we've got enough space there. Ten. So I've dug out ten levels worth of um slime chunk only to find that no slime spawns and i got a little sus i got a little sus i didn't see any slime spawning um yeah it turns out that uh slime will spawn in every other biome except for the one i'm in marablis lush forest well all the marablis biomes of which there's three do not spawn slime so we move to a new location and this actually does spawn slime. So this is actually very close to where we were in the other episode. There's a tree farm, which is perfect because it means I can AFK in here. But that's the um, the slime farm. So that's working. We can go and check, see how much slime we've got. So as you can see, this slime farm is working. We have 244 slime balls. So just a little bit more AFK in because we need to get 366 sticky pistons just for the farm. And here they are, all those sticky pistons. I've taken some night vision potion, which is why everything looks so bright. But I did that for you guys, not for my benefit. This just reminds me of the old school iron farms, like the stacking ones. They were used to be huge. And these days you can make an iron farm tiny. This is here just to grow the cave roots and to harvest them. So the stone will be on these sticky pistons and it will pop out every now and then um, to harvest the cave roots just to feed these tortoises. And this is with all the stone in and the cave roots planted. And as you can see, they've already started growing, which is excellent. So on this end of the farm where we've got all the redstone is where the mechanics of this farm happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a block here and we're gonna place an observer here. So this observer is gonna read when the cave root grows and I will show you I have a cave root on me so I can place that. Um, and then it triggers off the pistons. So it will trigger off this piston and the one below it. So this one here, the um, observer will look into there. It'll trigger that piston off and this one. So as you can see, I'll show you again. And the piston fires and then all those cave roots land at the bottom. And that's pretty much the mechanics of how this farm works. So this farm harvests all the cave root. And then the next thing we need to build is the holding quarters for our four Teenage Mutant Ninja tortoises. And so that is the root farm complete. And as you can see, all the roots are flowing through. So we've got this um, root farm on this side that feeds into this chest here. And then this root farm on this side feeds into this chest here. And we have our tortoises locked away. Well, they're not locked away. They're in um, a sanctuary. Yes, they're being looked after and they are an endangered species. So therefore we're protecting them. So they're in protective care. So all we need to do now is just, if I look up and do Okay, so this is this locks an item. We are going to then grab we just grab a stone. So if we put that there, now if I put that there, see that points that down. So this is what's going to mine the back of the tortoise. It's called a iron rod, and it basically just breaks blocks. So we put that in there like that. The only thing that's left to do is to connect the feed pipes up. So we need to go pipe there and one here, which now means that the feed troughs will start filling up. So this is how this works. This timer will click over once every minute, which will then send a signal through here to activate the pistons and then also send through two or three, no, four roots, which will then randomly go into the feeders. See, they just fed there. Hasn't been enough to give those any ores yet, but it has actually fed them. If we were to constantly fill up these feeding troughs, these tortoises would just eat it. They won't wait a minute for them to cool down. They will just keep eating until there's no roots left, which is why we need to kind of have all this timer set on here 
to activate all that. So look, there you go. They get mined. The iron nuggets come in, find their storage vault that they like, and in they go. We've got iron. This is crucial to iron farm, and it's a beast. So I really hope you enjoyed the episode. I'm hiding here in my AFK hole, waiting for the iron to build up so that we can trade with the villagers, which is going to be cool. Look at me. I'm sitting down. It's so cool. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs up and then tell me what you didn't like about it. How about that one, hey? And if you think there's a better way to do the redstone for the contraption for the tortoises, then just drop a comment down below and I will gladly read that. All there's left to say is, ciao for now.